We got the meet up.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And on behalf of the Global Wind Energy Council, Wind Europe and RWE, we'd like to welcome you to day two here at the Bilbao Exhibition Centre for Wind Europe in Bilbao, or Wind Europe 2022 here in Bilbao. And for those of you joining us on the Zoom meeting, a big warm welcome. Uh, we've got a great range of presentations today. Uh, I, we're going to, this first session is going to be a deep dive into the Chinese market. Uh, the Global Wind Energy Council released the Global Wind Energy Report. If you want to have a look what's in the report and what other markets are doing around the world, please pick up a copy at the, the Global Wind Energy Council stand uh, just over here to your right when you get out of this session. Uh, I'd like to introduce our first speaker to today, Mr. Feng Zhao, who's going to be uh, moderating this session. Feng is uh, the Director of St Strategy at the Global Wind Energy Council. Feng, welcome to the stage. Can you make him feel welcome, please? Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. And as my colleague Stuart said, uh, thank you for uh, joining the Global Market Center, co-organized by GWA, Win New York, and the sponsor RWE. And uh, I'm glad to moderate the first session for day two. Uh, my name is Feng Zhao. I'm the head of strategy at GWA and Global Wind Energy Council. And um, this session, we are going to focus on um, China. Um, join me today, as you can see on the screen, uh, we have three high-profile speaker, and one gentleman going to join me physically here on the stage. That's uh, uh, Dr. Chen um, from Minyang. And then we have uh, Mr. Yu from uh, Sevilla, the Chinese Wind Energy Association, um, join us virtually from Beijing. And then we have Mr. Ying from Shanghai. Uh, I don't know if uh, he's right now working from home, as you know. Shanghai is still locked down at the moment, um, but maybe he can confirm later. So uh, before we kick off the session, uh, let me first introduce uh, uh, Dr. Chen and to the floor. Uh, could you give your applause? Thank you. So for this session, uh, we are going to focus on uh, the world's largest market in China. Uh, as you can see this slide, uh, on Monday at the Ibezona Tower, uh, we launched our Global, of, uh, Global Wind Report 2020. And some of you uh, sitting here today or join us online, maybe already uh, participate. Our webcast uh, took place on Monday. Uh, this is the cover page for our report. Uh, the key takeaway is simple. And we had, you know, the second best year uh, in 2021 in terms of new installation, and only 1.8 percent trailing behind a record year uh, in 2020. So it's a quite impressive, uh, you know, achievement considering, uh, you know, where we were a year ago in terms of the challenge for COVID-19 restriction, uh, disruption on supply chain project construction execution and also uh, you know the inflation or commodity price increase significantly uh, all we can see here is that uh, looking at the growth on this uh, you know fantastic uh, growth chart both 2020 2021 I think without China we cannot go this far uh, this slide show the new installation uh, in 2021, uh, the first bar chart, uh, as you can see, uh, we have China made up 42.3% of unsure new installation in 2021. And this is actually 15% uh, lower uh, compared with previous year. In 2022, uh, China unsure made up, I think, more than 50% of the growth uh, new installation passed the milestone of 50 gigawatts for onshore in a single year. 
The key drivers is mainly due to the cut off the fitting tariff. But uh, again, um, having more than 30 gigawatt installed onshore in one year, that's still the second best year um, for the Chinese onshore market. Looking at offshore, this, uh, the, the, the pie chart on the right side where you can see uh, incredible, uh, we have globally speaking 16.9 gigawatt grid connected. Out of that, 80% um, more than 80% coming from one single market, uh, that's China, followed up by the UK, and we learn Denmark, Netherlands, and Taiwan, Norway. Uh, looking at offshore, I think one number is quite significant. You know, uh, globally speaking, the new installation in 2021 is three times as much as what we reported in 2020. But uh, if we're looking at the cumulative installation, uh, where we can see China put up uh, 27.7 gigawatt of wind by the end of last year. If you look at how much, how many megawatt European market has put together uh, in the past three decades, almost the same level, European offshore market at the end of 2021, the total offshore wind installation, that's uh, just the past the milestone of, you know, 28 gigawatt. So you can see uh, it's quite really, you know, impressive to see how the market can grow uh, in just a couple of years. Uh, as I can recall, China doesn't have gigawatt installation for offshore until 2017 or 18, so just a couple of years, and this is tremendous uh, growth. Apart from the uh, new installation, the position for China, let's take a look at the supply chain. As we know, of course, China is the largest market in terms of installation, and also here we can see on the chart, it's also the world's largest market or manufacturing hubs for turbine and also component. This uh, pie chart indicate in 2020, globally speaking, we have 120 gigawatt manufacturing capacity. This means uh, in terms of uh, wind turbine LaSalle assembly across the global, where you can see nearly 60% is from China. And um, at the end of last year, we still have more than 20 turbine OEM active in the Chinese market. Uh, out of that, we have three international companies joining the group of uh, Chinese turbine OEM. That's including Vistas, and SGRE, and GE Renewable. Uh, for component manufacturing, uh, where we can see China is also an uh, export hub. Uh, looking at the key component, uh, not just the gearbox blade generator, which the Chinese market made up around 60 to 65 percent of the global production, and also China is dominant the real earth uh, material. Uh, it's a, China, I think, account for more than 80 percent of real earth reserve and control the entire real earth material processing. And also, it's also the largest uh, manufacturing for casting component like the shaft, hub, etc. So again, it's a very, you know. Uh, impressive uh, growth in China. Now I'm going to introduce uh, the guest speaker and uh, continue this session. And the first speaker, that's the Mr. Yu Guiyong. He's the director of industry research department and global manager uh, of international in cooperation uh, department at the Sevilla, the Chinese Wind Energy Association. Uh, he's going to give us an uh, overview about you know where we are today and where the Chinese market is going to be in the next five years during the 14th five years plan. Uh, now the floor is yours, uh, Mr. Yu. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Fung, and uh, good morning and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, hello from Beijing, and uh, I'm very pleased to join this seminar and uh, take some a couple of minutes to introduce a little bit about the Chinese when it uh, and a market status. Um, so the, the communicators, please let me to share my screen, please. Share my slides, please.
Uh, the host, please allow me to share my slides, please. Okay, thank you. And uh, I protect myself on. Okay, so um, my topic today is about the Chinese uh, market in the new era. By new era, we mean uh, in the Chinese background, we coming to uh, the 14th five year plan. And uh, <clears throat> by this, uh, from this period on, the Chinese host that is getting into a new stage of uh, aiming at the target of carbon neutrality. And also by the new uh, era, um, from the uh, international background, we mean we have to confront uh, some new challenges of uh, globalization and uh, new changes for the uh, market and the uh, industry systems. Uh, anyway, in the past two years, even though we have uh, influenced by, affected by the COVID-19, uh, but uh, we uh, fortunately maintained a fast growth. And uh, we see uh, a, 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 a a, a, a quite good market performance, just like Feng uh, just now introduced. So the Chinese combination wind power grid kinetic capacity uh, till the end of last year has uh, uh, exceeded 328 gigawatts. And uh, we see uh, the new installation of last year is not that much of that of the 2020. Uh, it's about uh, uh, 48 gigawatts. But uh, 2020, we have more than uh, 57 gigawatts. But anyway, we have, uh, next slide, please. Uh, we have uh, another very uh, bright light for the bright spot for the offshore wind. So offshore wind is a bright spot for the Chinese market. Um, next slide, please. Uh, also, a uh, so my, my, my share my screen by myself. Uh, so let me see some updated uh, so far. Can I share it with myself? Thank you. Please allow me to share my uh, screen and slides, please. No? Oh, thank you. <clears throat> and we see the, <clears throat> but the, the offshore wind is a quite bright slice. Uh, last year, we see a sorry market performance. It's made up to the 25 gigawatts last year. And we see the, the, the Guangdong and the, uh, Jiangsu province, the top two provinces, top two uh, offshore wind market. And uh, so far we have the, a, the local subsidies issued from the, and announced by three provinces, including Guangdong, uh, Zhejiang and Shandong provinces because from this year on the central government subsidy is terminated. And uh, we are hoping more uh, provinces can issue the local subsidy policies. And uh, meanwhile, by the market performance, uh, we still have a, a, a better performance of, of innovation, uh, market uh, technology innovation, because we see the market buying is getting bigger and bigger. And uh, from uh, so far, we have the four to six megawatts um, turbines for onshore wind. And uh, for offshore wind, we have even bigger turbines. And uh, uh, eight to, uh, to 10 megawatts turbines has mass produced and has been installed this year. And also the six megawatts turbine, the prototype is going to be installed this year. And uh, also we see some new types of, of, of technology rules is growing. Uh, for example, the share of medium speed wind turbines is growing um, very fastly, uh, uh, even within these two years. And uh, to back up and support the uh, uh, technology innovation, uh, this country put much emphasis on the K 
key components uh, are testing facilities and a platform a, a capacity buildings. A, for example, for the 150-meter 100, blade testing facilities in Guangdong Yangjiang City has been uh, 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 put into uh, production last year. And maybe this is the, the, the biggest one so far globally. And also the, the installations and the transportations and the cable line capabilities has improved, especially for the offshore wind. I think the, the disability uh, a, a previously, uh, we lack the hand from the, the world, but we see the, uh, the, the gap is getting nearer so far. So <clears throat> we have uh, the most uh, a complete uh, uh, wind power industry chains in the world, in Chinese market, just now as Zhao Feng uh, introduced. We have the OEMs, key components, construction installation, and the other technological uh, services. And all this mature industry chain put, uh, let us to reduce our uh, cost uh, drastically. So um, we can predict that just from the year, uh, uh, so till the year of 20 to 25, we could uh, lower uh, another half of the cost from now on. And uh, also we contribute this uh, reduction of cost to the severe market competitions, especially for the leading teams among the OEMs and, uh, and the developers. And also we contributed this to the, uh, uh, to the technology innovation and the improvement, uh, especially for the bigger uh, turbines, uh, for the key components production in a modularized way so this could make the components more uh, popular, more generalized, give them more generality. And all this contributed to the drastic reduction for the, for the cost. And uh, also the, 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 the severe competition will speed up the Chinese uh, companies, including uh, OEMs and, uh, and uh, other investors going into the global market, I think. So, so far we have the 30 countries and regions record, but the total amount is not, uh, not big. It's relatively small. It's only about uh, six megawatts, uh, gigawatts. So uh, we hoping future, we, in the future, we'll get more records and more and more uh, com uh, com uh, companies getting into the global market. So just now, as we mentioned, the, the carbon neutrality targets I think the renewable energy, including wind power and solar power, is going to be the backup force for the, uh, the electricity system to get the carbon neutrality first, and then it's going to spread in the whole society, in the whole energy sectors. So wind power and solar power has been put much emphasis, and we'll get a, a, a more uh, faster speed of growth uh, to get the, 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 the target of 80% of the capacity for the whole uh, 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 electricity installations so, till 20 and 60. So to get that target, we have to uh, speed up from now on, from the 14th five-year plan. And uh, so in the next five years, the they, they newly installed capacity for decentralized wind power will exceed 50 gigawatts. And we will take the opportunity for the central government's strategy to get the rural uh, revitalization and uh, uh, compare with the, the record of so far, we have no more than three, no more than three gigawatts. So 50 gigawatts is really a big and ambitious target for China. <clears throat> and meanwhile, we, in the next five years, the newly installed capacity of a large scale and a lot of wind power based projects will exceed 150 gigawatts. And it's also emphasized uh, several times by the central government. I think this target is quite clear and uh, have to be guaranteed to get there. And also in the last five years, the offshore wind power installation capacity will exceed three, uh, 30 gigawatts to make the total to 25 gigawatts. So for uh, six or eight, a uh, gigawatts per year, maybe. And so uh, uh, overall, uh, we, uh, in, uh, 
to compare and uh, in terms of the 14th five year plans uh, target, we will have the annual installation for about uh, uh, 50, uh, 50 gigawatts in average. And I think this target will, will be guaranteed uh, to get the carbon, new, uh, carbon neutrality for the 2050 and the 2060. And uh, we have to get the, uh, the electric systems neutrality first. So I think this is quite clear. Um, I think we can get there. <clears throat> um, I think if we want to, uh, to, to get the target and the, 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 the development status, we need a more cooperation, just not as I mentioned, we confront some new challenges for the new globalization and the market change uh, organizations. We need a more, to put much more my emphasis, especially for the raw materials and the new market from the global perspectives. And so we are looking forward to new opportunities for further corporations from any markets with China. Yeah, so much for my introduction and uh, hope everyone is doing great, doing well. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Wei. Um, give us the overview about the situation in China um, from uh, the organization point of view. Uh, as we can see, uh, the future growth is quite significant and the stable growth are expected for the next five years. And now allow me to introduce the next speaker, uh, Mr. Ying Taofeng. He's the director of the Solution Center for the offshore business unit at Shanghai Electric. As we know, uh, earlier, China became the world's largest market, uh, you know, uh, at the end of uh, last year in terms of cumulative installation. Already the leading market in new installation start from 2018. Shanghai Electric uh, is the largest Chinese turbine OEM uh, last year or in the past many years, uh, being the leaders in the Chinese offshore market. Uh, they used to uh, have the license from SGRE, but uh, start from last year, they introduced their own in-house design for both medium speed and high speed, uh, medium speed and direct drive turbine. And now uh, let's uh, invite Mr. In uh, to give us a presentation about how they see as a, the largest Chinese turbine OEM, the challenge and the opportunity in the next five years. And as we know, start from this year, there will be no more support and all the OEM developer have to continue the journey and in the new era of uh, uh, great parity. Now the floor is yours, Mr. Ying. And before you start, could you let us know, are you working from home? And uh, maybe a short introduction about the situation right now in Shanghai. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, it's a great honor to participate in this Europe Wind Energy Conference and have such an exchange with you. I'm sorry, because of the epidemic, I cannot go to the meeting site. And uh, the content of my PPT is that China's offshore wind power full of opportunities and challenges. Uh, first of all, I will have a briefly introduce of our company. Shanghai Electric Group Company Limited is an equipment manufacturer grouping ranking first in the sales of China's machinery industry, focused on the business field of smart energy, smart manufacturing, and a smart city, and provide our customers with a, and provide our customers with industry grand green intelligent system solution. It's business all over the world, mainly including new energy, comprehensive energy environment protection, medical devices, and industry automatic. And Shanghai Electric Wind Power Group Company Limited is a secondary subsector of Shanghai Electric Group, which is mainly focused on the producing, manufacturing, and sales of wind power equipment. The company was listed independently in 2020, named Electric Wind Power. Our goal is to become the global pioneer wind life cycle service provider. 
Uh, electric wind power has been developed for 15 years since it's established in 2006. It experienced the, the installation of the first onshore turbine in 2007. The installation of the first uh, offshore turbine, 3.6 megawatts in 2010, and the base project installation of six, seven, and eight megawatt turbine in 2017 to 2020. In the process, it also experienced joint venture with Siemens and uh, later acquired the four share of Siemens to become an independent company. After years of development, more than 10,200 wind turbines with a capacity of 22 gigawatts has been installed in wind power projects. We have more than 1,900 employers and include a technical core team of more than 800 people. We have seven operation and maintenance centers in China. In the future, electric wind power put forward higher requirements for all employers. We should develop from simple turbine equipment manufacturer enterprise to a service provider in the whole life cycle. From a foreigner of the market to a leader of the industry, from the Chinese market to the international market, and we are working hard to release this transformation. Uh, from 2010 until now, electric wind power has already have 47 projects with 7.79 gigawatt offshore turbines connected to the grid and total order over 9 gigawatts. According to the statistics of Bloomberg, in 2021, the offshore installation capacity of electric wind power reached 4.1 gigawatt, surpassing Siemens to be the turbine manufacturer with the largest offshore installation capacity in the world. From 2013 to 2021, the newly installation capacity of electric wind power has also maintained the first place in China and the top three in the world. Electric wind power will continue its effort in the future. Then I will shortly analyze the development situation of offshore wind power in China. Since the first uh, offshore project of Donghai Bridge in 2009, China's offshore wind power has made great progress and development, and the average annual installation capacity has gradually increased. The benchmark price of offshore wind power was introduced in 2014. The high level subside supports the continuous improvement of industry development and the rapid growth of insulation capacity. And the technical level of offshore wind power has also developed quickly. Under the influence of policy of operation state subside in 2021, China's offshore wind power insulation capacity developed quickly in 2021 alone. The annual insulation capacity increased by 16.9 gigawatts and the cumulative installation capacity reached 26.38 gigawatt, surpassing the UK to be the first in the world. In 2021, China's offshore wind power installation capacity reached 16.9 gigawatt, which attracted worldwide attention. The main reasons we analyze are as follows. First, policy impact. Project after 2021 will no longer enjoy state subsides and the electric price only will have half or even lower. Developers must complete the full capacity of, of grid connection of the project before that. Second, we already have mature industry chain in Jiangsu, Guangdong, Fujian, and other region provinces, just as uh, uh, Mr. Hu said. The main offshore turbine supply all have more than three assembling workshops in China, which can support the supply requirements and the onshore subsides Police was ended in 2020, so we have sufficient resource for offshore projects. We have relatively advanced construction technology. Electric wind power completed the, the installation of one seven megawatt turbine in 33.5 hour and seven turbine in one work phase in 30 days. And we have rich installation resources. We have more than 40 installation ships for the project construction. Third, thanks for the God for low wind and wave in 2021. Compared with the previous years, the construction period in 2021 extended by 40 to 80 days. Fourth, all project develop coordination construction resources according to the project plan and the installation window period to ensure that all projects are promoted in order. Above, I briefly introduced the development of offshore wind power in China before 2021, as we all know, the whole power industry is mostly affected by our nation policy. The whole development of China's power 
China's wind power is also affected by the police industry and up and down for safe times since 2005. At 75th, the United Nations General Assembly in 2021, our government promised 30 and 60 carbon peak and carbon neutralization goal. At the same year's climate summit, China government promised that the total installation capacity of the wind and solar will reach more than 1.2 billion kilowatt hour by 2030. And this mark from the perspective of nation, we will have golden 30 year development of the new energy industry. And China's offshore wind power as an important sector of new energy will also have good de development opportunities. Under the influence of, of double carbon, China's coastal city will accelerate the transformation of energy structure. According to our analysis, it is expected that the new installed capacity of offshore wind power in China will reach 56.7 during 15, uh, 14th 5 year plan. Whether from our current nation policy or the development of the whole offshore wind power industry, China's offshore wind power is facing good development opportunities. And uh, we also have greater challenges in 2022 to 2025. After 2021, the floor of China's wind power will enter to no subside area without subsides according to the current level, including engineering and technical capacity, including all the industry chain and the developer cost return requirements do not meet the electricity price requirements. The analysis shows that uh, compared with before, the whole cost still need 1,000 to 2,000 RMB per kilowatt reduced, and the turbine power output need about a 10% increase. Also, according to the condition of China's offshore resource, more projects in the future will develop to deep and far away seas. At present, China has no clear offshore wind policy for exclusive economic zone. And the deep and far away sea will have higher requirements for technology and cost, which will bring great challenge to China's offshore wind power market. So from 2002 to 2025, China's offshore wind power is full of opportunities and challenges. And China's offshore wind power will develop in the direction of large-scale, customized, intelligent, and large turbine capacity in order to enter to no subsidized area as soon as possible. The government will increase the capacity of a single project to 1 million kilowatts or more through comp competitive allocation or other ways, so as to reduce early development cost and project sharing cost. All projects will customized according to the special condition of the wind farm, including how to increase the power generation, control the engineering quantity, and reduce operation and maintenance cost. At the same time, the turbine's capacity and the rotor diameter will continue to increase within the allowable range of technical level and construction capacity, so as to efficiently reduce capex and opex cost, increasing the output hours. Last chapter, I will introduce two new offshore turbines designed by electric wind power for no subsidized area. In the whole process of turbine compression and selection, we learn the experience from Europe but we found that there is a large difference in the condition of China's sea area from south to north, and it is not entirely suitable for us to only increase turbine capacity, so as to reduce number of the turbine and the engineering cost, just like Europe. We divide the whole China's offshore wind market into two, low and middle wind speed market, wind speed from 6.5 to 8.5 meters per second, and high wind speed market, wind speed from 9 to 10, carry out the development of the turbine respectively. Since end of 2019, we start to develop two platform turbine for market without subside. Last year at Beijing Wind Exhibition, we released two platform turbines. For the platform named Perception is for low and middle wind speed area. And this is the main parameter of the Perception platform. The turbine now is in the prototype workshop assembly. The first order has been obtained in Shandong province. Beach supply will begin in September this year. And uh, also at 20, 2021 Wind Energy Exhibition, we announced the petrol platform in the high wind speed area. And this is the main parameter of petrol platform. Both platforms consider typhoon influence in China and made a T-class design. The turbine now is in the prototype assembly stage. The first order has been obtained in Guangdong province. Beach supply will begin in July this year. 
And now we use the two turbine platform for two specific sites to do such economical calculation without subside. We select the site of 1 million in Jiangsu and 1 million in Guangdong. The average wind speed is 7.5 meters per second for Jiangsu site and 9.5 for Guangdong site. And the center of short distance is calculated as 90 kilometers. The power generation capacity of certain platform units in Jiangsu site can reach 3,500 hours and the petrol platform can reach 4,000 hours for Guangdong. From the calculation result, we can see that the turbine can bring better internal rate of return and low LCOE to our customers. Finally, just to briefly introduce the comprehensive energy development with China's offshore wind power in future. In the north subside area, the single development of the offshore wind power is difficult to meet the requirements in China, not only the developer, developer return requirements. For example, a province with sea farming as the main mode and province with problem of power transmission, slow the development of marine ranch with wind power, just like offshore wind power combined with sea farming. Promote the techni te technical research on, on offshore hydrogen producing, help storage and the transmission of off offshore wind power. The so offshore wind power also can connect to boost station to directly supply power to the offshore oil platform, reducing the power cost. Directly supply wind power to island can solve the problem of the power consumption and the power requirement of the island at the same time. Slow so these matter multiply energy complement ways. The offshore wind power development mode is continuously improved. And Shanghai Electric is already started the researching work of offshore wind farm with these comprehensive energy businesses. So wind 2 x we are looking forward to the future. That's all my talk, thanks. Last page, this is a contact person, Mr. Yang Yang from Electric Wind Power. If there is anything you want to communicate with us later, you are welcome to contact with him. Okay, thanks. That's all my talk. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Yin. Uh, Join us directly from Shanghai. From what I know, uh, under the WeChat conversation, he's working from home at this moment. Uh, I wish you luck and everything will be all right um, in a couple of weeks. Uh, thank you. Um, as the colleague from Shanghai Electric mentioned that, I think uh, it is challenge time for China without subsidies, but the industry, they are quite optimistic and that we will get there. Uh, one chart I can see the price is quite low and the uh, start from this year, Shanghai Electric believe that the capex will continue to drop uh, in the next coming years. Uh, it is true, uh, as we record uh, in our global, off, uh, global wind report, and the turbine cost for offshore is only 600 um, US dollar per megawatt, including tower. That's just half a price that uh, Vistas and SGRE or GE offer in the European or long Chinese market, where you can see the product is quite competitive. But uh, again, if the Chinese turbine OEM are ready to enter the international market, I think that's a good question uh, for all of us. And today and we have the opportunity to have uh, Dr. Chen Wei. He's the, the general manager of European Business and Engineering Center uh, for Minyang. He's coming all the way now from Hamburg, Germany, joining us today. And let's uh, um, listen to Dr. Chen and give us a short introduction about their internationalization strategy. As we know, Minyang has made great uh, progress in terms of internationalization. There is one offshore project right now under construction in Italy. They are planning to, they already signed MOU for investment in the UK and also in the emerging market in Brazil. Uh, now the, let's uh, give a proud to Dr. Chen and the floor is yours. Yeah, thanks a lot uh, that I uh, have a pleasure to attend this conference today. And thanks for the introduction of Fen. So I'm from Minyang Smart Energy, so I'm based in Hamburg. So uh, we have now offices in Europe. So and, and I think the previously two of other colleagues uh, in China has introduced uh, a lot of things regarding the recent development of the offshore wind in China. So it's a remarkable achievement now in China that we have installed so many offshore capacities last year. And uh, I'm 
what I'm going to present is that uh, the, actually the, the OEM from China is not only focused on China and uh, especially Ming Yang, so we have decided also to base on the huge uh, capacities that manufacturing capacities and engineering capacities in China that also could be beneficial for the international market. Yeah, we short, we short about Ming Yang. So, um, yeah, we are, of course, one of the biggest turbine, wind turbine OEMs um, of the world. And uh, we, our, our vision is, of course, to, to uh, contribute to the global uh, climate change and also the clean energy development. And, um, yeah, and also Ming Yang is one of the leading uh, wind turbine OEMs in the, in the offshore areas with, the, with the, of course, the route in, in China. <coughs> And uh, in terms of the uh, international, so um, we have here, I've showed the international footprints of Mingyang country. So we are, of course, based in, in Hamburg, uh, and, uh, in China, headquarters in Zhongshan, China, which is with, uh, with our logo there. And we have now also offices in Europe, so uh, in Hamburg, Germany, and in Copenhagen, Denmark. And also, we are now in the process to establish our first um, office in UK. And um, cumulatively, we have already installed a 45 gigawatt um, on offshore. And um, and in last year, um, as far we have installed uh, 3.8 gigawatt offshore, which is the second place after Shanghai Electric actually globally. And um, yeah, so that's a really, really remarkable achievement also for Mingyang. So Mingyang is one of the leading also in the, in the China offshore market. And we, we, we now also want to use, utilize these uh, capacities also in the international market. So we have in Europe and we are now in construction of our first offshore farm in, in Italy. It's going to be finalized in this month, in April. And uh, we have also offices in the United States and in, in South America that we are also in development of there. And of course, in Asia, we are represented in Vietnam and uh, in Japan and in Korea. <clears throat> yeah, here's what I mentioned. So um, this, the picture in the right-hand side is the yeah, it's our first offshore wind park in, in Italy. So actually, it's also a very first one for the like, Itali Italy offshore. So uh, that, is, uh, that project is going to be finished, uh, as mentioned, uh, till end of this month. And uh, that is a really uh, remarkable milestone uh, for Mingyang that we finished this very first offshore park. And uh, in terms of Asia, we have also secured uh, recently an order in Japan of uh, a pre-commercial sized project, 9 megawatt project with three set of 3 megawatt bottom fix. And in Vietnam, we have secured more than half giga order recently, and also they are all also on constructions, and also in, in Central Asia, in Kazakhstan, and, and also, as I mentioned, in South America, we have also development of around two gigawatt portfolio. So, so that is where we are, we are recently uh, put another focus on the international market, although China market is huge, but we still think the international is a key for the long-term development. And uh, another evidence that we want to go to the international market is that we have announced this uh, 60 megawatt with a total diameter of 242 last year, with aiming for the high wind speed uh, in, uh, European and uh, market in the United States. Um, that shows our, actually our willing, willingness and our, 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 our strength that we can work on the, the big platform and which could serve the needs also for the European market and also for the United States and also the other international market. And we are planning to announce, uh, launch this prototype uh, in 23 and finish all the certification till mid of 24 and uh, to be commercialized in the end of 24 of this turbine. Yeah. And in terms of the floating, so um, we have installed the very first uh, floating demo last year in South China Sea. That is uh, the first floating demo in China. And uh, we have worked with uh, CTG, and uh, that is based on our 5.5 uh, megawatt platform, which we have validated our design, floating controller, and uh, adjustment of our hardware to the floating environment. We have gained notable experience. And uh, in terms of the turbine technology, we have utilized the uh, super compact design, which is actually also quite uh, suitable for the floating application. 
that's why that's part of reasons that we are quite focused on the floating uh, development, and we are also now involved in several floating demonstration projects and and also pre-commercialized floating project in Europe. <clears throat> Yeah, and uh, we have also gained a lot of um, awards from the top magazine of wind power monthly that we are, we have gained the best onshore turbine up to um, 4.6 megawatt. That is for our 4 megawatt turbine. This is where we won the gold medal, and uh, we are in the the third place in the in the onshore turbine in the 4.6 plus, and we have also win uh, win the prize for the for drive chains of our 60 megawatt. Uh, three-stage planetary medium-speak uh, gearbox, and also the, the second place of the top loto blade of our 60 megawatt. Yeah, that's uh, it's also as uh, evidence that our technologies has been coming to the level that we could uh, also serve in for the international market. Yeah, that's all, all, all my um, presentation. So I'm based in Hamburg, so this is my, my contact. He's listening there. And our address, and uh, so happy to get get connected with uh, with with you, and uh, to make um, potential cooperations. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Uh, thank you very much, um, Dr. Chen. Gave us the introduction about you know uh, in terms of technology development and the global market uh, ex expansion, and it's good to see that you know. A lot of work has been done and progress been made uh, in Minyang. And uh, as you all know, you know Minyang introduced 16 megawatt MY hyper uh, speed turbine last year, make it the largest one. And uh, Dr. Chen is the brand behind that design. And thank you. Um, so again, that's uh, all the three presentation for this session today, um, because we are running a kind of behind the schedule. So. Uh, the, we can only take one question if we have on this floor, and then we are going to hand over to the next session. I don't know if there are any questions on the floor. Uh, my colleague, Aga, she's ready with the microphone. If you have any question, don't be shy. If you have any question, that's the best chance to ask a question. We have two uh, gentlemen online and one uh, speaker sitting here on the floor. Any question? Or Alex, any question online? Okay, all good. And uh, excellent work for speakers from Beijing, Shanghai, and also join me today, Dr. Chen. Please give us, uh, give them all the uh, final applause. Thank you, Dr. Chen. Thank you, Mr. Yi, Mr. Ying online. Thank you. Good luck. <laughs>